Today is that big day that I've been hitting on for a while. Tramtendo. What is going on, people? It's DJ F here, and I will do a comparison video of the MacBook Air M1 base model versus my Lenovo Legion Y540 i7 9750 Intel processor. Boy, that was a lot of stuff. I definitely want to ask you a question and please leave a comment below of which one that you think will win this comparison. I will use Ableton Live 11, which just came out, that is not optimized for the M1 chip yet. And we'll see if there is a clear winner or not. Let's begin. So one of the main things I want to point out about the MacBook Air is it is a 13.3 inch screen. So it is quite smaller than this 17 inch screen right over here. You can see the MacBook Air is quite smaller than the Lenovo Legion Wi Fi 40. And as you can guess, you can see which is the thinner laptop as I go right here and show you that the Lenovo Legion Wi Fi 40 is pretty thick, especially when compared to this baby right here, the MacBook Air M1 laptop. And here they are side by side. You can see how thick the Lenovo Legion Wi Fi 40 is in comparison to the MacBook Air. So let's look at that one more time. Yeah, this is crazy. On the left hand side, I have the MacBook Air M1. And on the right hand side, I have the Lenovo Legion Wi Fi 40 gaming laptop. The MacBook Air is the base model with eight gigs of RAM and 256 SSD. So that is how much hard drive space that it has. And the Lenovo Wi-Fi 40 has 16 gigs of RAM, is an Intel processor, and it has over two terabytes of SSD, uh, NVMe, PCIe. So yeah, they're both running totally different specs. This is Ableton Live 11, by the way, and I pulled up the preferences, and it, as you can see, the latency on both are very different. The core audio engine on the MacBook Air M1 has a low latency. This is the stock sound drivers that you get with every MacBook, and it's as low as 13.1 MS, and the Lenovo Wi-Fi 40, uh, as far as Ableton Live goes, the latency overall is 85.3. Now, we notice a difference here if I lower the sample rate. And if I lower the sample rate on the Lenovo Legion Wi-Fi 40, the overall latency actually got higher. It went to 92.9 MS. That's crazy. Wow. So I do have the same project open on both of them. And what I'm gonna do is start it up so we can see the CPU usage at hand. So let's begin. Neither system has any audio interface hooked up, by the way, and they're both running on power, so I don't want that to be a difference at all. So let's begin with the test. I have the CPU test here. I'll have it linked in the description box so you can test it out on yours and tell me what you get. But you'll need the Aturia V collection to run it so you can just download the demo version of it. So let's begin. Just from loading it, I can see that the MacBook Air M1 is like at a capacity of 25, 26, 23 uh, CPU load. The Lenovo Legion is at nine. So yeah, that's a huge difference. So let's run it. Not bad, not bad. It's in between 30 and sometimes it drops down to as low as 14. All right, that's the end of that. Let me stop it. So when I play it, the CPU is at 15% and it's steady at 15%. So that's pretty impressive. Now let's kind of unpack this because I've done this test before in my MacBook Air review. So let's go ahead and unpack it and see what we got here. So everybody else will see. So I'm gonna go through the plugins here so you can see it's the same plugins. So the first track has the Analog Lab V plug-in, which is very CPU intensive. And I'm gonna open it up here on the MacBook so you can see that. Let's go to track number two so you can see it's the clavinet. Let's go ahead and open it up on here so you can see it. See, I'm not like BSing or anything. There you go, clavinet. The next track, track number three, is the CS80 plug-in. So let's see that on the MacBook so you can see that I'm not uh, BSing you there. 
go. The next track is the DX7V. Let's open that up on the Windows laptop with the Intel processor. There you go. Let's go to the next track here, which is the OBXA. Open it up here. OBXA. Go. The next track is this CZV. So I'm gonna open that up. And then I'm gonna open it up on the Windows laptop. So I gotta close this out real quick. There we go. And there you have it. So why did I do this instead of like opening up the same plugin over and over and over again? Well, it's quite simple. If you open up the same plugin over and over and over again, well, it's not much of a difference. And the reason why I say it's not much of a difference is, well, your computer will recognize that it's the same plugin and allocate it and make sure that you don't overuse any of your virtual memory by pulling from that one instance of that plugin. And this is advice that I got from many different developers from many different companies and it always checks out. The other thing I want you guys to understand uh, when it comes down to the MacBook Air M1 or just the, the M1 chip, the new architecture that Apple developed. Well, the biggest thing that I really like about it and don't like is I get different results. Like sometimes when I'm live streaming or whatnot, uh, the results of this will be lower and sometimes it will be higher. I've done this test a couple of times, but for the most part, I'm very impressed because even in regular practice of making a beat, uh, you're able to make a beat and just be good with it. So the next test, I'm gonna export this project. I'm gonna export it as a WAV file. So I'm gonna go over here into files and choose export audio. Let's export the audio here. I'm gonna do that or the same thing on the Windows laptop. Now let's get a result here. And we're gonna go and export. We're gonna see which one is the fastest. So I believe we're good to go here. So three, two, one, boom. All right, I'm gonna press return. <laughs> now three, two, one, boom. All right, here we go. Three, two, one. Whoa. Did you guys see that? The MacBook Air M1 actually exported that short project faster <laughs> than the Intel computer, though the Intel computer has less of a CPU usage gauge. So that kind of tells me something there. That's even in certain cases where you see the CPU uh, very low, well, that doesn't mean that the overall performance is quote unquote better. Last but not least, the most important thing. Well, Ableton Live 10, 11, yes, 11 is not coded or optimized for the M1 chip. Matter of fact, it's running as an emulation, an x86 emulation, which is an Intel emulation code via Rosetta for RISC, which is RISC. We call it RISC. And this is coded for Windows or Intel processors. So with that being said, you get more of a CPU load like this, but it's not theoretically legit. However, most software does work on the MacBook M1 chip. So yeah, you don't have to worry about uh, any of that and whatever is not supported uh, will be supported in the future. It just takes a little bit of resources and stuff like that. Cause I've been talking to a lot of developers like, hey man, Man, I can't wait until y'all optimize it because, man, when it's optimized, it's going to be really rolling. And that's the reason why this $1,000 MacBook Air can stand the test against this $1,500 gaming laptop. So, tell me how you feel about this video. Are you shocked by the results? Uh, from what you can see, the Intel processor is still the king in a sort of a sense because... Well, the software is written in x86. So yeah, that's one thing that I would say is a caveat for anybody that is interested in the MacBook Air M1 or any of the M1 MacBooks altogether. But 
as you can see, the software still works and it does a pretty decent job despite all of the fact that it's not optimized yet. And that's the biggest thing that I wanna stress, optimization. And from what I understand about x86 code is that it's more GPU than it is CPU. So therefore certain plugins, certain DAWs won't display correctly. But one thing I will apply to Apple about is the Rosetta software, which translates x86 into risk. So yeah. And this is a long time coming because my main hang up about Apple computers was for the price point, it wasn't worth it. And now I have a $1,000 MacBook Air that is quite capable of hanging with the big boy $2,000 laptops and so forth. All that portable power. And you would think that it would struggle in many regards, but it does pretty well for itself. And you saw from the exporting that, wow, low latency, from straight stock drivers, Core Audio just rocketed out at 44.1 kilohertz. And at 48 kilohertz, I expect a lower latency as well, but I haven't figured that out yet. So if you have a comment or anything like that, that will tell me anything about, you know, getting 48 kilohertz to work on the new MacBook Air or any of the MacBooks, well, de definitely, I wanna know. So yeah. Are you surprised? Because I am.